I'm Judith Phillips, Professor of Gerontology at the Centre for Innovative Ageing here at Swansea University. We're a multidisciplinary centre. We run a Master's in Ageing Studies and we have a lot of people from uh, the professions who come to study ageing with us. We also engage older people in the centre as well. They're very central to the way in which we do research. Well, ageing is a global issue, is something that all societies are having to face and it's up there with climate change and the provision of clean water as the three greatest challenges that we have facing us in the 21st century. Wales has the highest percentage of older people in the UK and so we have a vital job here in the centre to provide research to local authorities, to private business and to national government about how they should face the challenges of older people, particularly in terms of their health and social care needs. It's not all negative. There are lots of positives about ageing. Older people provide a, 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 and c contribute enormously to the economy and to society. They provide uh, support uh, as volunteers, as, through grandparenting, providing care and financial assistance to other family members. Also, uh, there are opportunities for business in relation to older people. And this is one of the exciting areas that we are developing in terms of what we call the grey market. We have an increasing number of older people who are consumers. Uh, you name it, then there's an older market there to be tapped into. Older people, of course, also act as entrepreneurs, setting up their own businesses. And we have a number of research projects that actually look uh, at these things with business uh, together and with older people. One of the themes that we are developing is called environments of ageing. We are looking at how older people use space and place. Familiar environments can become very unfamiliar. That can be through cognitive decline, but also uh, urban areas get regenerated and redesigned. And of course, older people travel as tourists across the world. So how do they make sense of unfamiliar environments? How do people find their way around unfamiliar environments? But also, what are the barriers in the environment that make people anxious? One study that uh, we have done, which was funded by the ESRC, this was a project called Older People's Use of Unfamiliar Space. We involved 44 older people who came into a reality cave and we projected uh, two and 3D images in the cave and they have to, had to navigate around a particular route and we were able to monitor their heart rate to see which areas of the route were stressful. And then we took the people to the actual location itself, uh, a, a town which they were unfamiliar with, but now they had to experience it for real. What they were experiencing was that signage is not relevant uh, for older people. Often it's too high, it's too small and also they felt that landmarks were much better features than signage. One of the key things was the noise of an of a urban environment because you've got traffic noise, you've got pedestrians coming towards you and older people find this very difficult particularly if they've got visual and hearing problems. The unfamiliar town centre is now uh, redesigning some of uh, the features uh, within that town centre uh, as a result of the project. One of the most exciting developments within the university is the development of the Research Institute for Applied Social Sciences. And the institute has two functions. One is to develop applied social sciences, but also to embed an applied social science perspective throughout the university. So we're increasingly working with engineers, medics, uh, people in computer science, sports science, printing and coating. So we're working with people who are doing work on climate change, 
Um, for example, uh, in Hurricane Katrina, it was older people more than any other age group that uh, suffered the most. Also, we're looking at technology, working again with other disciplines to develop technological responses to the challenges of an ageing society. European funding is very important and we have very strong links in Europe, also in Canada, India, um, and particularly on the European front with Sweden. So there are synergies for collaborating together. We already have a number of projects looking at cognitive functioning in later life, particularly looking at social support networks for people with dementia. So we want to develop international collaborations around these particular areas uh, and take this forward uh, into our next programme of work.